we are the PhD students in CSIR ITIP working on designing nanoparticles towards organ specific delivery. And today we will be describing an instrument called Atomic Force Microscope or AFM. So this is an instrument that helps us to see many nano and micrometer sized objects which are not visible by net eye. So uh, we are working on drug and gene delivery and AFM helps us to see how the surface of nanoparticle looks like, how the nanoparticles are formed and how they behave according to changes in the environment. Uh, and besides nanoparticles, AFM can also be used to visualize bacteria and viruses. So to know what AFM is, we need to know how AFM works and what constitutes AFM. So we will be describing this further. कंडीशन इवन इन हेयर द मेटीरियल सेंसिटिविटी इन दीज इलेक्ट्रॉन माइक्रोस्कोपिक चेंजेस विद द इलेक्ट्रॉन डेंसिटी ऑफ द एटम्स कंस्टिट्यूटिंग द मेटीरियल्स वाइल इन ए एस एम द मेटीरियल सेंसिटिविटी इज रिलेटिवली इक्वल फॉर ऑल द मेटीरियल एंड इमेजिंग कैन बी परफॉर्म इन एयर एज वेल एज इन लिक्विड इंटरफेसेस विच ऑल्सो मेक्स इमेजिंग पॉसिबल इन लाइफ सेल्स एंड टिश्यूज AFM is a kind of scanning probe microscope. AFM has a probe tip mounted on the end of the cantilever. When the tip is near the sample surface, the cantilever is deflected or moved by a force. The way this tip scans over the surface depends upon different modes of AFM scanning. We usually use tapping mode where tip vibrates over the sample at its resonant frequency with the help of our piezo scanner. The deflection of cantilevers are measured by our laser that is reflected off the top of the cantilever and this reflected laser beam is tracked by a position sensitive photo detector that picks up the vertical and lateral motion of the probes or tips this process can be compared to how brell's script is read by the blind there are some embossed shape that can be felt by the finger tips running over these embossed surfaces and a mental uh, image of the text is formed in the brain in a similar way asm runs its finger tip the cantilever over the surface and this creates an image so we have this video system which help us to locate the region of interest and align the laser on the cantilever tip it includes uh, a camera and an optics and an adjustable uh, stand along with the separate illumination sources so the second thing is scanner which is includes one or more elements made from piezo materials when an electric fields applied to the piezo elements they elongate or contract uh, enabling the cantilever to oscillate now coming to the uh, parts outside the chamber so basically this is hev box head electronic box which reads the signals coming from the detector and other than that there is this efm controller uh, which provide high voltage to the piezos and other control functions For sample loading in AFM, we use mica sheets, as you can see here. They are relatively transparent, and mica sheets can be cleaved to get a fresh, atomically flat surface. So this is how we do it. We use a normal cello tape and paste it on one of the surfaces of the mica sheet, press onto it slightly, and then cleave it. Like as you can see, what you see on the tape is a freshly cleaved surface, and what remains on the main surface, substrate, is the freshly cleaved surface of the mica. 
So this is clean and atomically flat and can be used to load a sample. Once we have the freshly cleaved mica substrate, the next thing is to load the nanoparticle suspension onto the cleaved substrate. So we have a, the prepared nanoparticle solution here, which is an adequate concentration. So concentration should not be so high that it is just clumped together and is aggregated and not and not be too diluted so that it's difficult to move around and find the particles once we are in it. So we drop it drop by drop on the cleaved substrate evenly in all areas possible and using a freshly cleaved another freshly cleaved sheet we try to make a sandwich. So now the sandwich is made. So this is left to air dry for a few hours. And then later once it's dry, we'll be viewing it under the air. The mica substrate loaded with the sample is placed onto the sample holding plate where there is already a double-sided tape that is attached on it. Once it is placed and fixed properly, you can press it on like this, on the sides. This plate is taken and then carefully placed below where there are holding pins to guide for the placement. So there will be a satisfying click once the sample is placed properly. Picovi software by T-Site Technologies is the graphical user interface provided for controlling all the aspects of imaging. Here I'll be briefly explaining how we will be doing the imaging apart from the setup of the parameters. So all the parameters here have already been set up and we have started the imaging. So the scan area that is shown here is where we choose the desired scan area or the image size. So we have chosen here 10 by 10 and we'll be moving nanoparticles. So in some cases where the sample is in large size, like in case of cells such as E. coli, which are in range of micrometers, probably you'll have to increase the scan area. Apart from the scan area, there is also the, there is also the uh, scan speed, which depends on how many lines per second. And there is resolution, which have already been set. On the right side panel, we can see the image boxes here. These are real-time images that have been uh, generated once the scan is taking place. So we can zoom in on like this and change the flattening. So it will take some time to continue the imaging and to finish a single frame. So we'll wait until the imaging is done. Once the scan has completed, this is how the image will look like. On the right side, as you can see, the scale that ranges from light brown to dark brown, these signify the height, the relative height, and the sphere kind of light brown particles that you see here, these are the nanoparticles. You can also measure the size or the distance using the ruler that is given on the top panel. So once you click on the ruler and mark points, bordering the nanoparticle this will give the size of the nanoparticle so as you can see it is around 235 nanometers we work on designing nanoparticles that are formed by self-assembly of carrier molecules such as polymers or peptides with cargo molecules like nucleic acids. So uh, here we will be uh, explaining the mechanism of how the nanoparticles are formed, peptide DNA nanocomplexes are formed. So what we see here 
is bare DNA. That means only DNA molecules are seen through AFM. So it looks like strand-like structures. And this interacts with positively charged peptide molecules and these form spherical nanostructures. So to see how these are formed, we added little amount of peptide, maintaining a charge ratio of 0.8. Charge ratio is the ratio of charge on the molecules on peptide to the molecules on DNA. So DNA is negatively charged and the peptide is positively charged and they interact through electrostatic interactions and also other interactions and form nanospheres. So once they begin interacting, they form condensed rod-like structures. As we increase the amount of peptide, it begins to form flower-like nanostructures. And once when the peptide is increased and a charge ratio of 10 is attained, it forms perfect sphere-like assemblies as seen here which is in the range of around 100 nanometers and these are later employed for intracellular delivery. AFM is a non-destructive technique which can also be used to view live things such as cells. So what we have shown here is image of E. coli cell as you can see in the top left corner and the hair-like projections that you see here are pili. Besides viewing nanoparticles and cells as we have seen here, AFM is a technique that can be used to measure forces such as mechanical forces, electrostatic forces, magnetic forces and for the same reason researchers extensively use AFM to measure um, multiple parameters of materials such as stress, strain etc and also electrical conductivity and even in similar cases when, in, when it comes to applications in biology people also measure binding affinities between antibodies and ligands etc. 